Okay, take your Bibles and turn to Romans chapter 10, verse 17 is our, our theme verse uh, here today. And, uh, and uh, I'm excited about this, this message today. Uh, you know, I hope that you want to, to grow in your faith. You want your faith to grow. Now, God tells us uh, in His Word how to grow our faith. And the answer actually is, not, is to focus on something other than our faith. And so that leads us to our, our theme this year, for this year, is listen to God. Listen to God. And it's always, of course, important uh, to listen to God. And the verse, uh, our theme verse this, this year is Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You know, this verse is for everyone on, on earth. And it's true for uh, the believer, of course, but this, this passage, the previous verses, is discussing salvation. And, uh, you know, the, the Scripture is important in giving the Gospel. Uh, people need to see Scripture. They need to see God's Word when you are presenting the Gospel. And the more that they can hear the Bible, uh, the, the, they, that's something they can believe in and something that will strengthen faith there. But we're looking at this as Christians. We need to be in the Word of God. So then faith comes by hearing. You say, my, my faith is weak. Well, you need to hear the Word of God. As a Christian, all of us say at times our faith is weak. You know, you think about Jesus many times talking to the disciples and what did, what did he often tell them? O ye of little faith. O ye of little faith. And our faith, he could probably say the same thing to us often. O ye of little faith. Uh, I'm excited about this year, though, as we focus, on, we always focus on the Word of God. We always teach out of the Word of God, but focus on the importance of ourselves being in the Word of God and increasing our, our faith. So today we're going to see the benefits. We're going to, later, we're going to see 20 benefits of being in the Word of God. 20 benefits we get out of spending time in God's Word. Uh, and, you know, I'm excited with the, the new bookmarks that we, that we have. And I put them on the screen uh, as well. They seem a little bigger, but these uh, have some verses on there that would be very important to memorize and uh, I thought of you know, putting other verses on there as, as well. And on the, in the back, there's three verses. Uh, and, but it's a very, I think, a very pretty bookmark as well. We were able to, on our vacation this last year, take these, these pictures. Um, so two of them are, and one's the wave, and one's in the area of the wave. Uh, and uh, then one is Bryce National Park, one is the Grand Canyon, and one is Zion National Park. Um, but uh, God's Word is powerful, and we're going to see many things about it uh, here uh, today. And Lord willing, in the, in the weeks to come, uh, we may do a series on Sunday nights where uh, we go through the entire Bible uh, this year. And so we spend you know, a week on Genesis, and then some of the smaller books will fit a couple books in one week, you know, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and things like that. Um, but just do an overview of each book of the Bible, and some of those we'll probably do Sunday mornings, and just so you know, we learn as much as we can about God's Word. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We need to listen to God. So God tells us how to get faith. We need to be in the Word of God. Uh, if you're praying that God would increase your faith, strengthen your faith, and you're not reading the Word of God, you're wasting your time. Why would God give us another way before we've already fulfilled His instructions and obeyed Him the first, the first way? Uh, I don't know if I put this on there. Nope, I didn't put that on there. Um, Pastor Tim Butler, he, he said this, Faith is trusting what God says and acting upon it regardless of my circumstances and regardless of the consequences. So faith is just trusting what God says and then obeying God. 
and no matter what's going to happen or what you think might happen. And uh, he, went, we, he went on to talk about the children of Israel as they were fleeing the Egyptians. And he said, you know, if you're like the children of Israel and you find yourself with water in front of you, mountains on either side, and the Egyptian army coming full speed ahead, he said, don't get discouraged. Get excited because God is getting ready to do something. Right now, I feel like, you know, we need God to do something. We need Him to do something. We are boxed in, it seems at times. And, you know, we thought 2020 was bad. Remember, last week, the title was, you know, 2021 or 2020 2.0. Everybody's looking forward to the new year. Or is it just going to be a worse version of last year? Well, I don't know if you've seen, I've seen people put on, on Facebook and different things, something like, I got my free trial for 2021 and I don't want it. <laughs> so it's been a rough start. But I hope you're excited about what God can do. Don't get discouraged. God can do great things. Has this been a, just a horrible, miserable week in, in some ways and a discouraging week? Yes. If you spend your time you know, on social media and all that, oof. Uh, and I spent too much on there myself. Um, but you can get discouraged. Then you got to get back in the Word of God, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We need to walk by faith, not by sight. That's why I have up here, our, this was our theme for, for last year, to see by faith. 2020, it was hard to see good things with our physical eyes. But by faith, you can see, hey, God is working. God is is doing something in our verse with Psalm 119, verse 37. Turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity. There was a lot of vanity, a lot of worthless things to behold in 2020. And quicken thou me in thy way. Show me your path. Make me alive in your way. And God will fulfill, uh, will fulfill that uh, if we ask him, ask him to do that. But we need to see by faith. We're, we need to walk by faith as well. You know, you think about Moses as, you know, they were going through the Red Sea and, and all of that. He walked by faith. But most of his people didn't. Oh, they followed him, but they murmured and complained all along the way. Uh, you know, and so here, here today, you know, there's so many things going around around the country in this last week is, you know, we've seen so much division. You don't just see the division from the right and the left, but you see the division within conservatives and, and things like that. Well, aren't you glad that that's not today, that's not what draws us together? That's not what unites us? What unites us is following Jesus Christ and His Word. The Word of God unites us. That's why we're here. And that's what brings us together, not you know, political views and things. Now, if you're in the Word of God, those things that unite us, will determine some uh, stands we take in the political arena. That is for sure, because God's Word is powerful in every area of our life. It gives us wisdom for every area of our life, and it's not to be excluded in any area of our life. Well, the people didn't have much faith, but Moses did, and it affected the entire nation. This nation has forgotten God in large part, but we must not forget God. You know, God's workers, they're going to you know, come and go. You and I, we're going to come and go. Hopefully the rapture comes before we go. Uh, and I'm 2021. Wouldn't that make 2021 the best year ever? <laughs> At least for us, if the rapture were to come. And it very, may, it very may come. We need a plan for that. We need to expect it. Uh, but God's workers are going to come and go. But God's word... And his work will keep going. Will keep going. So point one today, and we're going to see two points, and then under the second point, we're going to see the, the list of things that the Bible does for us. But first of all, let's see that God's word endures forever. God's word endures forever. And Psalm 119, verse 152 says, Concerning thy testimonies, I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. In Psalm 119, verse 160, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth 
forever. Everything about what God says endures forever. His testimonies, and, and it has been forever. Thy word is true from the beginning, and it goes forever. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 25. But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. This is important to know, important to realize, and it doesn't pass away, it doesn't get old. The truths don't suddenly cease to exist or cease to be powerful or they're no longer applicable or, you know, it's, well, it's 2021, so therefore we need something new and improved and something different. Uh, there, no, the, the Word of God endures forever. And uh, we're going to be looking at a lot of Scripture in this message, and this year we'll probably be looking at even more Scripture than uh, than usual, because if we're focused on the Word of God, let's just make sure we're using more of uh, the Word of God in every aspect uh, of our life. But, you know, God has a lot to tell us, and it's all important. The, of course, the Bible is written by, by man, but it's inspired by God. Now, the books of the Bible, are they, they each have kind of their own flavor, their uh, you know, the grammar and different things based on, on who the writer was. Somehow God was able to keep that in there. Now, I myself, you know where I get that from? Because that's what other people say. When I'm reading a book, I can't look at Philippians and look at Matthew. And, oh, I can tell it's a different, different writer. I don't know if I just don't know enough about English or something, but I don't know. It came from God. You know, it, to me, it doesn't really matter that it has the flavor of that that author. It all came from God. But you have, you know, 40 people over a 1,500 year time from all aspects of life, many of them not knowing that other people were writing books of the Bible, many of them not fully understanding even the things that they were writing, but God showing them what to write. You had, you had wealthy people, you had poor people, you had kings, you had servants, you had doctors, you had you know, brilliant people, well-educated people, and less educated people. You had every aspect of life that you could think of. You had fishermen that God used to write the Word of God, and every word is important. God directed, uh, directed it all. Uh, but in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 21, we saw verse 20. Five, but let's see verse 21. Oh, no, this is 2 Peter, before it was 1 Peter. Uh, For the prophecy came not, uh, uh, not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So, you know, the, God has used people, whether it's in uh, uh, writing Scripture or previously, he, I mean, he had people speak the Word of God. Um, you know, teach people, and as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. But all Scripture, as we see in in Second Timothy chapter three and verse sixteen, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for everything. Right? It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, and it goes on. You know, to say that we'll be profitable to all good works, and then in the chapter four that we we need to preach the word. Uh, and that is the thing that changes lives. God's Word, it endures forever. God has used His Word for thousands of years. You have many people have, who have tried to uh, destroy it, and they have not been able to. And, you know, just this morning we were singing, The Bible Stands, and you know, nothing can... Nothing can can destroy it. Uh, let's see. What verse is that? Um, in verse 2, its truth by none ever was refuted, and destroy it, they never can. They can't destroy it. And I might refer to this again, again later, uh, but God's word stands. In 2 Timothy, Chapter 2 and verse 9, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. At times we might fail or we might, uh, or we might be doing what God wants us to do, and 
be bound by the wickedness of this world, can't go any farther. You know, we have Twitter delete our account or something, and we can't proclaim the Word of God, or YouTube cancel us, or any of that. But God's Word can, cannot be stopped. Uh, and I you know, pray that we can use those platforms. We'll be able to continue to use those platforms to get the gospel out. But nothing can stop the Word of God. Uh, it cannot be bound. And praise the Lord for that. It endures forever. So don't lose faith when things get, get hard. You may feel as though you don't have an impact, but God's Word endures forever. Point two, God's Word changes lives. So what does God's Word do for you? What does it do uh, for me and, you know, and others? Uh, the more we hear what He says in His Word and obey what He says, you know, the more fulfilling our life is going to be. And this will be proven out in the things that we, we're going to see here in a few moments. But Adrian Rogers, uh, he said, said this, If you do not know, love, understand, practice, and obey the Word of God, I can tell you without stutter, stammer, or apology, you are not a victorious Christian. In order to be victorious in the Christian life, live the way God wants us to, we need to love the Word of God. We need to know it, and we need to love it. Now, do we always understand it completely and practice it completely and obey it 100%? No, but we better be doing it more and more each day. The, and it, we will see that as a believer, we'll be more and more victorious the more and more we obey it, the more and more we practice it, know it, understand it, and that's the, you know, the process that we go through. Uh, now, God's definition of victorious is different than the world's definition, and that's not a bad thing. That's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing that God's definition is far better than the world's definition of victorious. And it's not even winning an election, or it's not, it might not be getting that job or that raise or those things. Uh, it, it can be far better. Uh, than those things, and it's you know different every step along the way, and in every person, and every circumstance of what victory means in your life. But the most important one of those victories in our life is us walking more by faith, us you know walking less by sight, us obeying God, you know disobeying Him less and less. How well do we know and love the Bible? We'll never know it enough. We're never going to exhaust it. But hopefully we want to know it better. Hopefully we are learning to love it more and more. Now, our love for the Bible and for God can grow, but it takes work. It takes work for it to grow. Our love for God, that takes work for that to grow, just like any relationship. But our love for the, for the Word can grow stronger. Uh, you know, in Psalm 119, uh, which you can go ahead and turn there if you want, um, I'm going to have a bunch of verses that I won't have on the screen that will be in Psalm 119, uh, as that's where we're going to get most of our 20 things that we're going to look at is in this chapter. But in Psalm 119, the longest chapter in the Bible, almost in the exact middle, I think Psalm 117 is in the middle, but... Uh, the longest chapter in the Bible, it all talks about the Bible, the benefits from the Word of God and, and things of that nature. But the word love is in that psalm 12 times. And it's usually, you know, I you know, love thy law or love thy word or love thy name. It's all talking, most of it is talking about loving God, loving the things of, of God. But the psalmist says that, uh, you know, he loves the Word. Do we love the Word like we ought to? Uh, in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he, uh, he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, oftentimes when we do maybe do something, oh, that's not really me. No, yes, it was you. You know, that's, you know, that was in your heart. You know, the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? You know, only God can change that. So how do we change our thinking? How do we change what we meditate about? Well, first and foremost, we need to be in the Word of God. If we start 
meditating on the Word of God, thinking on the Word of God, that will penetrate our heart. That will change our, our mind. So God's Word will change our heart. God's Word will change our desires. It will change what we think is important. It will keep our priorities right. But we have to be in the Word of God for that to happen. Study the Bible and it will do, it's going to do many things. And so we're going to see 20 things here. Uh, and the first one is, and uh, I'll, uh, I don't have these 20 things on here. Um, and you, I won't give you enough time to write them down and all of that. And most of them, you probably won't have time to write down unless you write really fast. But like on the YouTube channel, I'll put it down below. Uh, and if you want to look at my notes or if you want me to send this to you later, uh, I can do that uh, as well. But the first one is it will give you a better prayer life. And we find that in John 15 in verse 7, one of the verses that is on our, uh, our bookmark this year. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, I could spend a lot of time on this, and I'm not going to uh, in the future, probably pretty shortly, I will do a message uh, on this that, you know, if you want to have a better prayer life, you know how to have a better prayer life? Get in the Word of God more. Be in the Word of God more. Your prayers will be answered more because you'll be praying the right things, because you'll know the mind of God, you'll know the will of God by being in His Word. You know, God tells us that we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Well, so if he, if he abide in Him and His words abide in us, you know, it makes a huge difference in our, in our life. We will, our faith will grow as we're in the Word of God, and we will see more things that we can do through Him that strengthens us. You know, we will be more than conquerors. Uh, number two is we'll have more fruit in Mark chapter 14, or Mark chapter 4, verse 14, and then we'll look at verse 20. The sower soweth the word. And then it, it talks about the different things that he sows, uh, the different ground that he sows it on. There's the hard ground, and then there's the, the rocky ground, and then there's the ground with the thorns that choke out the word. And then in verse 20, uh, it's on the good ground. And these are they which are sown on good ground, which as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100. If the word of God is getting in us, it will change our heart. We will bring more fruit as a result of the Word of God. You know, our love will increase for Him as we love the Word more and more. I want to uh, look at another verse just before we get into the list in, one in Psalm 119. 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 13 it says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Never forget that this is the word of God. And, you know, it's not the word of men. Uh, and so the things that come from the word of God will change will change our life man it's not man's opinion it's not uh well that was for long ago no this is the words of god and it has not uh that will will never change that fact will never change it endures forever and we need to learn to obey it we need to learn to, to meditate as the, the 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 psalmist uh said in psalm 104 34 i don't think i put it up here uh it says my meditation of him shall be sweet. It will be sweet. Other places, like in Psalm 119, it will say uh, that you know, it's sweet like honey, or it says you know, it's more valuable to us than gold and silver, and in another spot it says, yea, you know, even precious, uh, precious gold, or fine gold, uh, it says. That's how much it should mean to us. That instead of getting, you know, we'd be more excited to be in the Word of God than getting a huge check in the mail. Now, can God send a huge check in the mail uh, as an answer to prayer? Yes, and it kind of goes hand in hand in those cases. Uh, but the Word of God is, should be precious to us. And it can be, if it's not precious to you, it can become more and more precious. And you know, at times in our life, some days it's going to be more precious than other days. But in general, hopefully it's getting 
more and more precious to us every day that we can't survive without it. We're desperate for it. Okay, so Psalm 119, and uh, I think there's a reason that the longest chapter in the Bible is about the Bible. Now, many chapters, the length of the chapter has nothing to do with you know, God ordaining that because men came up with chapter divisions. Uh, and so the book of Galatians didn't have any chapter divisions in it. It was just the book of Galatians, and just one letter. But this chapter, you know, in the Psalms, many of that, okay, that was that chapter, that was a psalm. Uh, that was its own standalone thing. And chapter 119 for sure is, of course, is that. As it is, it has you know, uh, 176 verses, and it's divided into, I believe it's 22 sections of eight verses. And every, in the Hebrew language, every one of those sections starts with the next letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, we can't tell that here in, in English, but um, so it breaks it down into those, those different sections. But it's all about uh, the Word of God. In our second service today, um, we'll talk about a little more about some of the things uh, in it, but uh, just, a, just briefly on that. Uh, but this, this is endless, the amount of things that are in you know, Psalm 119, the encouragement for the, about the Word of God. But in verse 3, uh, you will be blessed. They also do know iniquity. Uh, wait a minute. Verse 2, verse 2. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies uh, and that seek him with the whole heart. So this is number three. The third thing that uh, we will be blessed um, that uh, the Word of God does for us is it blesses us. Blessed are they that keep His testimonies and that seek Him with the whole heart. If you're seeking the Word of God, how do we seek, seek God with our whole heart? By getting in the Word of God. That's the only way to really know Him, and you will be blessed if you do that, and you'll be blessed if you keep those testimonies as well. Number four is down in verse 7, uh, and uh, this will be, You will praise Thou ha uh, verse 7, I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. As we learn God's judgments, we will praise Him. And not only will we praise Him, but with uprightness of heart, our heart will be changed uh, there is, as well, which goes along with the next one, number 5. You will be cleansed, and that's down in verses 9. Uh, and we'll look at 11 also. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his way? by taking heed thereto according to thy word. And then verse 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Some people think it's good enough to hide God's word in your heart. No, the reason, the purpose is so that we do not sin against God. So that we continually meditate on the word that we have hid in our heart. Uh, number six, uh, you will be counseled. And that's down in verse 24. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. So we need to delight in them. They must be our delight. It must be what makes us excited. But it's also our counselors. When we have a decision to make, getting in the Word of God, and you know, God, what do you have for me? How will this help me to grow? Number seven. You will talk of his works. And that's down in verse 27. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. We'll make you see what God is doing in your life, and you'll want to tell somebody about it. And, you know, of course, yes, that can be the gospel, um, like what uh, D.L. Moody said. Uh, said, God stands in no need of our strength or wisdom, but of our ignorance and our weakness. Let us but give these to God, and He can make us uh, of use in winning souls. Say, well, I'm ignorant and I'm weak. Great. Come to God, give those to God, and He then can and use you. So let's talk of His wondrous works, even just among ourselves. 
you know, what God has shown us in His Word, the wonderful things that God uh, has done for us. Um, I want to, before I go to, to number eight, uh, let's look at verse 32. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. We cannot obey God's word without the grace of God. So we'll run the way of his commandments. We'll follow after his commandments. How? Only after he has enlarged our heart. Only after he has given us that ability. It's only by his grace. And that's why I want to refer to this, this uh, hymn that we sang before the Bible stands. Um, we saw in verse 4, it says, The Bible stands every test we give it, for its author is divine. And then here's the part I want to focus on. By grace alone, I expect to live it and to prove it and make it mine. The only way we can do that is by the grace of God, that we can test the Word of God, that we can prove the Word of God, that we can apply the Word of God to our lives is by the grace of God. He will enlarge our heart so that we can be faithful in doing that. You know, this, this book, of this chapter, is very convicting. If you read through here, you will find many things, you know, I will praise thee with uprightness of, of heart. Can we always make that promise? I will do that. That's kind of a scary thing at times. Uh, there's so many of things like that in here. Uh, in verse 97 says, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Is it really? Anytime we're you know, acting out, you know, we're not walking by faith or we're sinning, I, mean, I can't say that, that that is true all the time. I pray that it's more and more of the day you know, each day. And, you know, there's, you know, motivational speakers oftentimes, or even motivational books, you know, like um, Think and Grow Rich and things like that. Uh, often they'll have, uh, they'll instruct people to have like a mantra of some kind, you know, I will be rich, I will do this, or I, you know, look at your face in the mirror and say this, or, you know, some of these foolish things. Um, but if we look at Psalm 19, we kind of read Psalm 119 as kind of our, you know, a mantra, like something that I, this is something worthy of doing. Uh, there, verse 97, oh, how I love thy law, and I will meditate all the day. If the more and more we read that, the more and more we are in the Word of God, the more and more that will become true. That can become true in our, in our life. Uh, what a, a wonderful thing. But we need God's help in order, you know, for these things to be manifest in our life. So number eight is you will have answers. And that will be down in verse 42. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproacheth me, for I trust in thy word. So as we're in God's word, we'll have the answers. And often that doesn't necessarily mean, okay, somebody asks you a difficult question about the word of God, that you're just going to have it on the tip of your tongue. Maybe they'll say, oh, I have to get back to you on that. Uh, you're not going to know everything, anything and everything, though we should be learning more and more and be able to answer more and more. But I think even beyond that is we will answer people properly. We will react even properly to how people treat us. Uh, we will react differently. We won't lash out. Uh, we won't, um, have, you know, our temper won't flare up and things uh, like that uh, as well. Number nine you will have liberty. And that's in verse 45. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. You know, in the Declaration of Independence, it says, you know, we're endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We can have... Uh, you know, really, and another way you could say the pursuit of, of happiness is the pursuit of virtue. I heard somebody put it that way. Pursuit of virtue. The, and that's what, because that's what makes us happy. The Word of God makes us happy. The, the things of God makes us the, the most uh, happy. Well, here, I will walk at liberty, for I seek thy precepts. Well, God gives life. We see here, God gives liberty, for I seek thy precepts. You could have 
the pursuit of happiness, the pursuit of God's precepts, the pursuit of virtue. I think those go hand in hand. It's God that gives us that pursuit, that God gives us that, that uh, happiness there as well. So aren't you glad God has given us liberty? It's not the government of the United States of America or even the Constitution. As much as we you know, love the Constitution and God has used our Constitution um, to not only give us freedom, but to spread the gospel around the world. You know, as this country has spread the gospel more than any other country in the history of the world. We still spend more on missions than any other country uh, in the world. Uh, and, you know, praise the Lord for that. But God is the one that gives us liberty. You could be in a persecuted country and have more liberty, more God-given liberty, than somebody who's not following the Word of God here in America. Number 10. You will be made alive. And in verse 50, This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. And that was, goes along with our theme verse last year, which was in verse 37 of this chapter. Uh, God quickens us. He makes us alive. His word does. Uh, in verse 11, or number 11, on, the, on our list of 20, you will have a reason to sing. Verse 54, Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. If you don't have something to sing about, get in the Word of God. Get in the Word of God. You know, and I've been thinking about this for a while, but I just want to tell, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you here, if you don't have a hymnal at home and you're a regular attender of our, of our, of our church, um, then you can take a hymnal home with you and just plan on bringing it back. Um, you know, right now we have extra hymnals, but someday we're not going to. So if you want to bring it with you every week, you know, that's fine. Um, but I think it's important to, to sing. And we know these, these wonderful hymns, and, you know, th- you know, there's many good ones in here that we don't know, that we don't sing. And, and uh, if you don't sing well, then, you know, kind of, you, you can, you, who cares? <laughs> you know, you can just read them or make sure no, when nobody's around, sing anyways. Uh, God doesn't care. Uh, sing out, um, and God will be glorified. But He gives us a reason to sing. He'll give us a, a smile on our face. Number 12, you will remember the Lord. And we're going to look at a couple verses here, 55 and 56, say this, I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, and have kept thy law. This I had because I kept thy precepts. The next verse, which is in the next section, says, Thou art my portion, O Lord. I have said that I will, would keep thy words. You know, God's our portion. He's all I need. Uh, and the more we remember his name, even in the night, I remember thy name, O Lord, in, uh, in the night, in the dark times, in the difficult times. The more we're in the Word, you know, we, the only way to be able to remember the Lord, to remember what He's done for us is to be in the Word in the night, in those times. When you're discouraged, when you feel like, you know, what, what direction is there to go? There is no hope. Trust in the Lord. Get in His, in His Word. This I had. He was able to do that. This I had because I kept thy precepts. So not only was in, his, in the Word, but keeping them as well. Number 13, the right people will be glad to see you. Uh, and let's look down at verse 74. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me, because I have hoped in thy word. Now the opposite of that is true. Uh, you're going to have people uh, that are not going to want to see you if you fear the Lord, if you are in his word, uh, because they don't like the word of God and they don't want to be convicted because of the Word of God. Number 14, you will have hope. Now, this is verse 92. Really, the, kind of the second half of this chapter, it talks more about difficult things. You know, verse 81 to really 87 there, that little section there, you know, my, my soul fainteth. Um, I have become like a bottle in the smoke. In verse 83, which was, you know, like a, you know, uh, 
a bottle made out of skin that's old and it's, you know, it's got crusted, you know, it's just going to fall apart. It's about to break apart. Um, and there's, you know, how many are the days of thy servant? And there's so many things in this, really the second half, in, you know, verse 123, mine eyes fail for thy salvation. Uh, here in verse 149, hear my voice according unto thy loving kindness. And in verse 148, mine eyes prevent the night watches. Um, and so many of you can tell, okay, now that the psalmist is in pain. But through all of this, we can find hope. We can have hope in his word. That's where we get hope from. And so verse 92, Unless thy law had been my delights, I should then have perished in mine affliction. Now in some verses, he uses the word hope in here. Um, but that one, that shows that we get, we get hope from his word. Unless thy law had been my delights. Unless I had been excited about your word, about the things that you say, I would have perished in my affliction. I couldn't have taken it anymore. So if you can't take it anymore, delight in the word of God. Get in the word of God. You say, well, but I don't like it, so I don't want to be in it. Well, if you get in it, you'll start to like it. You will start to delight in it. You'll start to love it. God will use it to change, to change that. Change your thinking about it, so it will give you hope. Number 15, give you wisdom and understanding. And we'll look at a couple verses, starting verse 98. Thou, through thy commandments, hath made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. So because of God's commandments, if we listen to them, if we obey them, he will make us wiser than our enemies. You might think, well, that's not a big accomplishment because my enemies are fools. Yeah, but look at this. Let's keep going. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. Where does our understanding come from? It comes from God. It comes from God. God can make us more wise than the previous generation if his testimonies are our meditation. Now, I've said this many times. We can't have our walk with God through someone else. You know, your kids can't have their walk with God through you. No, they need to have a relationship directly to God. Now, when they're little, you have to direct them in that. And me as the pastor, I try to direct you in your walk with God. But you don't have your relationship with God through me. You know, that's why we don't do what you know, Catholics do, confessing to a priest. No, you confess to God. You talk with God. God talks to you. Um, God doesn't talk through, through me. No, he talks through his word. Uh, now, God, does God use us as we proclaim his word? Absolutely, uh, in that way. But we need to have that relationship directly with, with him. Uh, in verse 100, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. So here more than enemies, more than teachers, more than the, the ancients. Now, do we at any time, if that is the case in our life, like the psalmist, can we take credit for that? No, it's only by the grace of God. It's God that has enlarged our heart. It's only by, it would only be by God's grace that he has allowed us to do that. Number 105, this is number 16. Uh, number 16 on our list, uh, you will have uh, a lit path. Verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, this is probably, this might be the most familiar verse in this chapter. But can we truly say that with our life? That his word is a lamp unto my feet. It's only by the word of God that I see which direction to go. It's, the, it's his word that lights my path. The only way for this to happen is if we were continually throughout the day meditating on the Word of God. The decisions we make, the reactions we have, the things that we do come out of our walk with God, of our meditation on the Word of God, and God will light our path. Number 17, a hiding place and shield. And this will be down in verse 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. There's that word hope. We have hope in His Word. But if we hope in His Word, 
The only way to hope, I mean, you don't really hope in his word if you're not in his word. But if we do that, we'll realize he is my hiding place and my shield. Um, and that will become our hiding place. You know, when life is hard, we'll go to the word of God. And, you know, because, you know, Jesus is the word. You know, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, number 18, light in understanding. And we've already seen this. We've seen both of these, but let's look down in verse 130. This is just a fantastic verse. I want to put this in, in here. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Man, such a great thing that it, that it does. It just enters and it gives us light and it gives us understanding. We could go through a list of bad things that would happen without the Word of God. You can find plenty of that you know, throughout the Bible. Aren't you thankful that it does these, these things? Uh, and ver, uh, number 19, we'll look at down in verse 165. Now you'll see, now you can find other things throughout this chapter, and you will find some of the things we looked at repeated several times throughout this chapter. But in 165, it says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Does that mean nothing bad is going to happen? No, offend there means, this really means nothing shall cause you to, to fall. Um, now, are we going to stumble along the way? Are we still going to sin? And yes, and the more we get into the Word of God, often the worse we are going to think of ourselves because God's going to, that light that shines on our, on our heart, the light that shines on us through the Word of God is going to reveal things that need to be cleaned. And we will notice more things. We might find ourselves confessing more sin or apologizing more or doing those kinds of things the more we are in the Word of God. But that will bring great peace have they which love thy law. So it's not just being in the Word of God that brings peace, but it's loving the Word of God. It's loving it. And, and, and if you love the Word of God, then nothing will, will cause you to fall. You know, you know, when those you know, fall into sin, you know, and whether it's, let's say, the, the pastor in Indiana of that huge ministry that is in jail you know, today because he fell, um, that wasn't just a oops one day. He wasn't loving thy law. If you and I do the same thing, we're not loving God's law. We're not in it and loving it day by day and throughout the, uh, throughout the day. Um, so we need to be careful of that. But it will bring, green, bring great peace. And lastly, number 20, it's actually in a different place. We'll look at Psalm 1. Didn't put it up there, so you have to turn there. Psalm 1, uh, and just verse 2 and 3. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So number 20 is we will prosper. You know, Charles Spurgeon said about these verses here, he said, often we might not see the prospering. Say, well, if whatever I do is going to prosper, it's just, you know, everything's going to be smooth. I mean, that's what that sure sounds like. He said, no, a lot of times you're going to have to just take it by faith. You're going to have to have eyes of faith in order to see that. Walk by faith, not by sight, and just give it time. The things that you do, if it's based on the Word of God, it's based on delighting in the law of the Lord and meditating on it day and night. So, so every decision you make is based on what would God want me to do in this situation. You know, having the, the fruit of the Spirit just overflowing from your life, then you won't wither. Whatsoever you do shall prosper. So there's those 20 things that God will do in our life through His Word if we will only be in it. And the, the next, the afternoon service, um, is just going to be a, a shorter service, but we're going to talk about, 
you know, reading through the Bible and different things uh, like that, and maybe have some input uh, from you, what you do, or different apps that you have to help you with reading the Bible, and then some things like that as, as well. But we need to be in the Word of God, and it will change our life. So listen to God, and the way He speaks today is through His Word. There is so much uncertainty in life. So many things. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know how our life is going to end up. But there is one thing that we can know. There is one thing that we can be certain about. And that is, where are we going to spend eternity? I'm Matt Floyd. I'm the pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in South Florida. And I want to share with you how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven. There's two options. When you die, you'll either go to heaven, spend an eternity with God in heaven, or you'll spend eternity in hell. No one wants to go there, and I don't want you to go there either. See, we have a God who loves us so much that He doesn't want us to go to hell either. He would like all of us to spend eternity in heaven with Him. So many people say that you can't know for sure that you're going to heaven, but the Bible says in 1 John 5.13 that you can know that you have eternal life. And if God says it, I believe it. So how can we know for sure we're going to heaven? Well, most people think, well, I have to be good, I have to get baptized, I have to go to church, I have to, and they have a whole list of things that they have to do. They have to do more good than bad. But the Bible says that we're all sinners. And sin cannot go to heaven. God can't let sin into heaven or we'd have death in heaven. I'm going to let this hand represent you and me. And I'm going to let my phone represent our sin. The Bible says all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. This hand represents God. Our sin separates us from Him. God can't let that sin into heaven. That sin must be paid for. And all the good works in the world isn't going to pay for that sin. Because, you see, the Bible says the wages of sin, that payment of sin, is death. If you die with that sin on you, you'll spend an eternity in hell forever. But God doesn't want us to go to hell. So what's the answer? Well, letting this hand represent Jesus, Jesus was the answer. You see, He never sinned. He came to this earth 2,000 years ago. He was 100% God and 100% man. He never sinned. He didn't have any sin to pay for. And He came for the purpose of dying in your place and in my place. He hung on the cruel cross of Calvary. He shed His blood. He took our sins upon Him, was buried, and the third day rose again, paying for that sin. In John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So how can I know that I'm going to heaven? By believing that Jesus died on the cross. He shed His blood on the cross. He died, was buried, and the third day rose again, paying for my sin. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't pay for your own sin. You can't work your way to heaven. So right now, put your trust in Jesus and Jesus alone, that he died in your place to pay for your sin. And if you did that, by the promise of the word of God, you can know that you have eternal life. What a glorious thing we can have. So you not, might not be sure about what's gonna happen tomorrow but you can be sure of where you will spend eternity. Trust Jesus and trust Him today. Thank you.